Hi, I'm Paul Day Ball from Niagara College, Welland, Ontario, Canada, and I'm going to do a small presentation on how to create a banner image for the top of a web page. I'll also be showing how to put images inside of text um, and along with uh, creating a small button uh, that you would put onto a web page. All right, so to get started, we're going to uh, first open up a new document in InDesign. And we're going to click here on web. Now, the reason we're using web is so that it automatically transfers it over to an RGB color model. That's really important for us to be in RGB and not in CMYK. I'm going to make this one 1000 pixels by 250 pixels. Uh, the other important part down here is you you'd want to make sure that the margins down here are all zero. Since they're connected with this linked together, that makes sure they all connect. If you put in one, just hit tab, it'll make them all zero. The reason you do that is you really don't need a margin on a banner. So we go ahead and create that and we now have a, a banner across. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and create um, just some uh, text on here with an image inside of the text. And we're going to do it for our mythical restaurant, which is called the chopping block. So to start that off, I need to get some text onto the screen. I'm going to draw a text box and I'm going to type in chopping block. Now, um, I'm going to select all that type and to quickly go up in size, and I'm going to give you a whole bunch of quick shortcuts uh, that might help, is that you hold down the shift and the command key, which is the key right next to the uh, space bar. The shift and command key, and then you can click the period or the, uh, what, the greater than sign or the comma and the less than sign. If you click click the period greater than sign of course it gets greater it gets bigger and then the other way around is the less than sign makes things smaller that's one way of making things larger the second way is to actually just control the type size um, I'm going to first change the font before I do that I'm going to look for a font now um, how I'm going to do this I'm going to um, move this over over here and I am assuming that you know kind of the basics of InDesign um, I'm going to move that over here and I'm going to select the type and I've just done that by triple clicking in the box there and it selects all the type for me and I'm going to roll down here and you can see that uh, InDesign has this great thing where it automatically shows you what it's going to look like on your type as you're going. So we'll just scroll down. What we're really looking for is a big blocky type um, and I've never never use this one let's uh, let's try that's nice big blocky type and we're going to make it all caps um, and of course now it's not quite wide enough so I'm going to pull this out like this and what I want is I want this um, blue box the the actual frame to be exactly the size of the type now that I've picked my type I'm going to do that by right clicking right clicking in the box and then uh, just go down to where it says fitting and you can see that it says Fit the frame to the content. Look at that. It's perfectly around it. You always want to make your frames um, almost perfect size because if not, when you do multiple frames, you get frames overlaying frames um, in, a, in an inappropriate way and it's really difficult to work with sometimes. The next thing I can do is show you how I can shape this type. Now, if I hold the shift and the command key again and I click and hold in the corner and remember clicking and holding um, is so that you can see it happening because if I just click and move fast, you'll see that I get a... a a, a blue line but it doesn't actually show me the thing moving and then when I let go it it refreshes so what I really want to do is holding down shift and command click and hold for a second and then move and you can see it doesn't real time now what I'm doing is with shift and command down I'm getting proportional type but I don't really want it proportional normally I want it proportional believe me I really do want it proportional but um, in this instance, I don't want it totally proportional. So what I'm going to do is hold down just the command key, click, and I'm going to pull this down. And you can see that by holding just the command click and clicking and holding, once I start moving, it actually moves in real time for me. I'm going to move this up. Now, I'm going to do some special work here. So I want this to be uh, pretty tight together. So I'm going to select all the type and I'm going to go up here to tracking. I'm going to track everything back together just a little tiny bit. Uh, maybe just minus 10 would work perfectly. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put underneath 
um, that this is a steakhouse, uh, a steakhouse or a, um, a grill house and a bar or a restaurant. It's a restaurant and a bar, but we'll put um, grill house and and bar. So I'm going to bring that up. Um, I'm going to look for like a, a, a nice a sans serif for this. And I think Myriad Pro would work uh, well here. The nice thing about Myriad Pro is it gives me a lot of different weights and stuff to work with. And that'll, uh, that'll work really well for this. All right. I'm just going to um, make that a little larger. So I'm going to pull that in like this. I can do that fitting thing again. And then I can just hold shift command, click hold, pull that out. I'm going to put it down at this end here. And uh, there we go. So this might be a bit big. So let me bring that down a little bit. And since it's a mythical bar with no uh, with no logo yet, I can do anything I really want to it. All right. So um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this as white. I'm going to put this um, type. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put um, inside of it. I'm gonna put an image. To do that, we have to understand that when you type, you're actually just putting what's called a glyph on the screen, or you're just putting a, a character on the screen that represents the letter N in our mind. Um, of course, the, you can see that the the O down here is different than the O here, and and it, the B here is a different shape than B here. So it's just a glyph, right? Now those are individual little drawings. Um, that um, are mathematical formulas, so they are vectors. So if I select all of them and I go up here under type, you can see I say I can create outlines. I don't really need to select all to do that though. I could just do it this way. I could click here and say create outlines. Now when I do that, you'll see that each one of these is now an individual little drawing. That allows me to put type inside of it. So I can go ahead and I can say place, or um, I can actually go ahead and uh, say place. So I'm gonna, with that selected, I'm gonna say place. I'm gonna go to my desktop where I have this image of flames and I'm gonna put those inside here. Now the flames are quite large and I and really the, the the brown line that um, indicates where your edge is is way out here. So to get that in there properly, I'm gonna right click again, and this time fitting has a whole bunch of, of options. So I'm gonna say, fill the frame proportionally, and it puts it in there. And now I can click, if I click and hold, I can actually see the flames going inside. And maybe I want it like that, or now I could actually hold my shift command key and then maybe get it to be where I want it to be. So I'll pull this down. I, I, I want it fully flamed at the bottom. And then I can decide how much flame I want at the top. So I can maybe, maybe there. There you go. That's pretty good. Now, um, what I want is the background um, to be the dark flames. And this is what I, um, this is kind of the way I designed it in my head. Um, so I'm just going to uh, draw a box over the whole thing. And I'm going to place into that box the flames. Now you can see that there's darker flames at the bottom. So what I really want to do is flip this upside down. Now I, I want to show you that there is a way of flipping this. It's right here. You can see it. It flips it over. Um, but it would leave off the pasteboard and stuff. So what I really want to do is get this down to size. So I'm going to say, fill the frame proportionally like that. And now you can see that I've got this down here. What, what I want to do is flip that upside down. And to flip it upside down nicely, I can just make sure I click here in the center and then I can flip it over. Now, this allows me to flip by the center. So it's flipping across that black line in the center of the whole thing. Then I can just click and drag that down. I need a little more height on it, so I'm going to hold down my command key. I'm going to pull that up, pull this down, 
pull this up. And there we go. Problem is, this is now in front of my type. So all I'm going to do is right click. Um, I'm going to get the first tool. Sorry, I have to get the, the blue line around it. Right click and I can say arrange send to back. And there we go. It's now behind this. This type uh, should become white. So I'm going to go under swatches and making sure that this is forward. I'm going to say that's paper. And here's the issue. Right now you're seeing that blue line. But if I turn off the grid by clicking out in the blank area and clicking W, you can see that it, I'd have nothing around it. So you can't really see it. So what I'm going to do with this one is um, right now um, you can see that the outline you no longer have type here. It's now those are drawings. So I'm going to say that the frame should be white. And that will bring that forward for me. There we go. So I've got a little bit of a of a of a look going on here. And uh, it, you know, maybe not the best, but it, it, it's a it's a look for a bar or restaurant. The next thing I need though is I, I really need to maybe have some buttons going down the side that say home menu, location, that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna show you how to make a really simple button. The first thing I can do is figure out what the size of the button I want is. So I'm just gonna draw a box here. Um, and up here, it says that um, right now the box is 133 by 36. So if I made that up here, if I made that 130 by 30, that would be about right for a button. So 130 by 30, we have to remember that. I'm gonna save this um, this piece first, and I'm just gonna I do it on my desktop. I'm gonna say new folder. I'm gonna say chopping block banner folder. That's gonna be the folder, and then up here I'm gonna say. And if I name it correctly here, when I make the uh, PNG file, it'll automatically make it the right name and everything. Keeps everything nice and clean for us. So I'm gonna say a new file, and remember 130 by 30 is the pixels of this, uh, of this piece. I'm gonna say it's a web file, and it's gonna be 130 by 30 pixels. Oh, 30 pixels. And of course, uh, no margin, don't need a margin. I have to make sure I'm under web, that way it keeps all my colors and everything correct. Well, did that work out? Nope, I have to rotate this. Um, now, if I had, let me let me show you again if I, what I should have done is ensured that my width and my height were correct. And sometimes that happens if you're, if you're not careful with it. So let me just go back, I'll just make a new one, new. I'm gonna go 130 by 30 and make sure I hit the tab key so that it locks it in. And now I should be okay. Okay, the first thing I do is I put a box in here and um, I'm gonna put some uh, th a thickness on the box or a stroke on the box. And I'll do this, I'll make it a, a two point stroke on the box. And you'll notice the blue line is in the middle of the stroke. What, that, what happens there is if I now take that blue line and I put it here on the edge, you're gonna see that the blue line is actually, uh, half of my black is off and half is on. Um, there's two ways to prevent that. One, you can just draw this up very carefully so it touches, but the problem is if you change the thickness of the line, it goes towards the outside and towards the inside. There's a way of preventing that though. If you're under the stroke palette over here, um, you're going to click this one, which is align the stroke to the inside. And that way, when you draw this, it goes right to the outside. Okay. Now, I'm going to go get some colors um, that I think may work here. So I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to look for a nice bright color right here. I'm going to show you how I get that color over to my other one. I'm going to click this one and I'm going to um, go over here and I'm going to say eyedropper. I'm going to open up my swatches just so you can see it happening and I'm gonna click there. And you see how I now have this color? I'm gonna pull that down to here, okay? 
and I can actually, um, I can I can save that swatch. I can do anything I want with it. Um, and let's see what happens if I go over here. Do I get that color? Nope. So you have to be careful with that. Um, sometimes you can do it by dragging it between the two, um, or you can simply just keep the numbers. So uh, 241, 211, and 27. And I'll show you how to add that color over here. So I, what I did was I went into swatches and then I just went new swatch. And in RGB, I can simply type in 241, 211, whoop, forgot it. And was it 27? Well, let's see, yep, 27. So over here, I now have that color in my palette. So there's a couple ways to do that. So I'm gonna just keep that um, color in my palette. Um, I'm gonna use um, white for my border and I'm gonna fill it um, with that color. Now, um, maybe I should, right now I should give you some color so you can see the next little stage here. The next thing I do is put rounding on here just to show you some uh, tricks and techniques. You may want a square or corner, but it's just to show you the technique of how to do it. Um, with this selected under object, um, it actually has um, this corner options in under object and you just click on corner options and then you can actually just click I want to have a rounded corner a beveled corner um, a rounded probably work the best here but I want them all to be the same so I click the little button here it makes them all the same and um, I may not want it to be rounded that much so I might want to just go like that and now I have a nice rounded corner I'm going to pull this out to here and I'll show you why I'm going to have a white uh, border after I put it back on the page it'll make it'll make it work make sense to you then okay so I got that on the outside and I've got a fill on the inside now if you fill it if you fill um, if you leave it as paper um, you, you actually have to make sure you fill the inside of the box because when you save this as a transparency, if you don't say it's paper on the inside, it takes it that the, you want to be transparent on the inside. So be careful to do the fill it with a color or make sure you fill it with paper if you want to have the inside of the box be um, actually filled with um, either white or some sort of color. Next thing I do is uh, put some type in here. I'm just gonna type home. And um, I'm going to go and use um, Myriad Pro, and that way it gives me all sorts of, of weights and stuff. I can use a semi bold. Um, now, you got to be careful when you're putting in one. You want to put in um, a long button first when you design, or make sure you have lots of room. I always take my. Uh, type and I pull it straight to the edges like this I'll show you why in a minute so that the box for the type is exactly the same size as the outside of the of the uh, piece when I select that I can actually center it this way and then if I want to center it um, the uh, uh, vertically I just go under text frame options and I select center and that way it puts it now I know I'm perfectly centered so I'm going to uh, save this button. I'm going to do a save. In my chopping block, I'm going to put a new folder for buttons. I'm going to call this home button. Um, sorry, I should follow some naming rules here. And the reason I'm putting it home button one is that there might be buttons different places on the page, so different looks to buttons. So all of the buttons that look like this are gonna be called one and they'd be two for some other ones or something. So I'm gonna say save. And now I simply have to go ahead and say export. Now I've saved it, I can export it and I can export it as a PNG. You can see there's a different ones right here. This is important that you want a transparent background and um, anti-aliasing, which gives you a nice smooth type. The next thing I'm gonna do is change the inside. 
and I'm going to say menu. Once I have the menu in, I can just do a save as, and I can do a save as menu button one, and do an export. Now that I've done that, um, I can close that. When I go back here, I can now go and get my buttons. So what I'll do is I'll just click somewhere. I'll go and say place, just command D incidentally. I'll go to my desktop, go to the chopping block, go into buttons, and here's my menu, see? Double click, I can put my menu on the screen. And now I can put my home button on the screen. And then as you can see, I can just move them around wherever I want them to be. And if I had more of them, of course, I would do it like that. And there you go. Um, I've created this. Now those buttons, uh, they don't have to go on the actual PNG here. Um, if you're actually doing this for a web page, you just might make the buttons and then use them as an image as a button. Um, or um, eventually I think you would probably uh, be um, doing your buttons as CSSs or something. So anyways, there you go. That's how you can make a basic banner. The last thing you have to do is export the banner. Um, I'm going to save it and then I'm going to do an export. Um, I'm just going to put it straight into here. This is going to be exported out as a PNG. Again, um, I can do a transparent. It doesn't really matter here. The background's not transparent. It doesn't really matter. You can also select a high quality if you'd like. Um, you can actually go to a higher quality. Um, 72 DPI, it's going to be an RGB image, of course, and then you export it out. To finish this whole piece off, um, just to show it to you actually running, I'm going to open up um, a browser. I'm going to say, open a file. And there we go. There's my uh, top of my website. I hope uh, this helped today. This is uh, Paul Dayball from Niagara College. Have a great day.